Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to a brand new Let's Play. Today we are going to be doing something a little different. Uh, we're going to be playing Free Enterprise. This is probably going to be, I don't know, four or five hours max. Uh, I'm hoping. It might be less than that. Uh, my average completion time for a seed like this is between two and a half to three and a half hours. So, basically give myself an extra hour to kind of take into account the fact that I generally play slower when I'm doing an LP. And you might notice that we have a black screen going on there. Well, the reason we have this black screen going on there is because I have not actually looked at the seed yet. Uh, let me give you some background on what Free Enterprise is if you don't know. <clears throat> it's a randomizer. Basically, you take a copy uh, of the ROM of the game, you throw it into a magical device, it spins it around, and it spits it back out based on toggle switches that you set and kind of rearranges everything in the game. Um, generally speaking, I'm not a huge fan of randomizers. Uh, pretty much the only randomizer I like and actively play is Free Enterprise. Um, I would probably like the Final Fantasy 1 randomizer a lot more if I knew Final Fantasy 1 uh, all that well, which I don't. I really know Final Fantasy 4 pretty well because I've beaten it a few times. And just, I've really only ever beaten Final Fantasy 1 like once, and it was the Donna Souls version, which is not what the randomizer is based on. So I haven't really had a whole lot of other randomizers kind of catch me. Uh, and even then, only a few of them are, I think, like even worth, like a few of the games are even worth randomizing. Uh, Legend of Zelda 1 for sure is a really good randomizer. Uh, Link to the Past is a pretty good randomizer. I don't think it's as great as The Legend of Zelda 1 one. Uh, Final Fantasy 1 is a great randomizer. I just don't know the game super well. Final Fantasy 4 Free Enterprise is an amazing randomizer. Uh, some of the Super Metroid randomizers are neat, but I can't play them because I'm not good at Super Metroid. I can barely wall jump, and I've never beaten it. So, yeah. Um... Anyway, so the reason we're looking at the black screen is because I've never seen this seed before, and we're going to open it right now. And I get a Fusoya start. So we're going to go through... Um, so the basic idea is you go to their website, you set what flags you want, and then it kind of, like I said, percolates and spits out a uh, ROM or an IPS patch or however you want to do it that will actually... Uh, you can apply to your game. Um... So let me go through the flags I have set here. So O, none, means I don't have any special objectives set. Uh, my goal in this game is to find the crystal, get powerful enough to kill Zeromus, find a path to Zeromus, kill Zeromus. That's it. That's all I'm required to do. K is the main uh, randomization option. You can set it to various levels of randomization where it's ju it just mixes the key items within themselves. Uh, I've got it set up to where it mixes the summon rewards, the moon pedestals, the trap chests in the game, um, all mixed in with the key items. So I can get the crystal in a um, trap chest in the underworld, for example. Um, uh, slash unsafe means that I am not guaranteed a path to the underworld before I have to go to the moon. So that can make things a little more difficult. Uh, P chests. I'm trying to think of what that means. Hmm. Oh, right. That's the pass. So in the vanilla of Final Fantasy IV, um, the pass is just a joke item. You spend a whole bunch of money, you go down there, and it's basically a 16-bit uh, titty bar. In this version of the game, what the pass does is you you can set it to where it's it's available to purchase in a shop, it's in the key item pool, or it's in like three chests somewhere in the game that's not on the moon. And that's what I play uh, this with. Then you go to the uh, Troya and use the pass, and what it does is it uh, takes you directly to Zeromus, and that's what that is for. So that way you don't have to go to the lunar subterranean. So like if you if you're ready to beat the game and you haven't unlocked a path to the moon, you can just go fight Zeromus. Uh, C relaxed. The, what that is is that is the character randomization. Uh, when you play, uh, re what relaxed means is every character has an equal chance to appear in every slot. The other option basically 
uh, weighs the slots based on what point in the game they are, and it makes Edge and Fasoya less likely to appear in those spots. So because I play on relaxed, I was able to start with Fasoya. Slash maybe means that maybe that character doesn't appear in the pool. Like under the normal settings, uh, like defaultly the way it does is every character ha will it appear at least once in the character pool. And slash maybe means that, well, maybe they don't. So you can end up in seeds where you don't have a white mage, you don't have a black mage, you don't have Cecil. You've got five Edwards. Now that's now you're not you're never gonna get five Edwards unless you like do that specifically set that up. Uh, J spells and abilities just means that the stuff that was cut from the original Final Fantasy two is put back in the game. Things like uh, Yang's keep is it called keep or power? Um, and like his brace command and things like that. It's put back in the game. The couple of white magic spells that were cut. Uh, T wild means that. Pretty much anything is fair game to appear in a chest. Uh, I can open a chest in the Misty Cave and get a Adamant, for example. And splash sparse 50% uh, means that 50% of the chests are just empty. So, like, if you want to do slash sparse 100, that means the only thing that you can get out of the chests are just the, the trap chests and the passes. Actually, I don't know how the interaction would go with the passes. Hmm. Uh, shop. Uh, sla uh, shop wild is similar to the uh, chest wild. Basically, anything can appear in the uh, for selling the 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 for selling the the shops. You can purchase. I've had uh, seeds where you can purchase at like lots of seeds where you can purchase adamant. You can purchase Artemis bows, Artemis arrows. Uh, crystal rings, things like that. Things you don't, a lot of things that are not, you know, n normally easy to get. Um, B standard, that's bosses. The bosses are standardly, they're just ship, uh, mixed among themselves. Slash unsafe means that I, uh, they kind of weigh the bosses on how difficult they are. And kind of rearrange them to where you have a path to get get to a decent level of strength before you have to fight certain bosses slash unsafe turns that off the alt gauntlet is just a, a fun thing a funzy thing it can make the gauntlet which is considered one of the bosses uh the febble gauntlet one of the uh, more difficult but generally speaking um uh, in the vanilla febble gauntlet you fight the same enemies you fight at Fabul, and the alt gauntlet just changes the enemies to random encounters at the uh, whatever location you're at. So, like, if you're on the moon, you'll fight moon random encounters. Witch burn is a four funzy thing. Um, so, why uh, the wyvern boss will immediately mega nuke you uh, when you get into the battle with him. And what? Because of the way, like, magic defense and all that work, that's almost always an instant KO. Even if you roll the Wyvern somewhere like the Misty Cave, you know, like, he'll just kill you. There's nothing you can do about that. Uh, but you can, so you, there's an option to turn off his opening Mega Nuke. And what, that's, uh, I forget what that one's called. But uh, instead of... That, uh, you turn on Witch Burn, which just replaces it with a random, some some other random attack in the game. So, he can open up with Virus. He can open up with, uh, I don't think he can open up with Zeromus's, um Big Bang. But he might be able to. I don't know. Uh, characters, uh... Uh, in characters, that's uh, no free lunch. So what I've got no free lunch settings on is I've got uh, no free key items, no free bosses, no free characters. Uh, what that means is um, like they don't just ever give me anything. So like if you in a normal 
settings, you would go up to Mount Hobbs, halfway up, where Fasoya joins in the main game, you would get a free character. Those characters are gone. So the only characters that are available to me to recruit are ones that are behind key item checks or boss checks. Uh, no free key items. All that does is switch out the key item that Edward gives you in Troya to requiring the um, killing the Mist Dragon. When you kill the Mist Dragon, then Rydia's mom's dead body is available to go back to Mist, and then she'll give you a key item there. No free bosses. What that does is it uh, turns the boss bit on for all the bosses. And basically, that can do some very interesting things uh, with thing like the scripted battles, things like uh, the Dark Knight and um, the Water Hag, especially if you roll them in a uh, very late spot, it can be troublesome. I do have um, the Fasoya Challenge also turned on. What, that, what the Fasoya Challenge means is that he does not start at full strength. He gains in strength as we kill bosses. So... No special objectives. Let's see. So I've got Palum and Fasoya. Fasoya has, so you see he starts with 500 hit points instead of his normal 1900. So they start me with 13 and 15, 3 star bells, 4 tenths, and I got the pan. Okay. So I have a general like path that I like to kind of stick to. Uh, I'm going to check this chocobo forest. There's nothing in here. Oh, let me see what magic Fasoya starts with. So Fasoya starts with a random assortment of black magic spells. Fire 2. Okay. Black and white magic spells. And he gets more spells unlocked as you kill bosses. And he gets more hit points as well. So we're going to start raiding treasures to try and get some equipment for Palum. And we're also going to peek in the end here and see who... The character is there. Is that? That's either another Palum or Porum. And there's the pass. Well, and that's a Dark Knight. This is not a character to recruit. That's the Dark Knight boss that you fight at the top of Mount Ordeals. That's potentially a bad spot. It's, eh, it's not too bad. So we're just going to look for chests here. Interesting. I haven't found a single treasure. Uh, that's distressing. I had sparse 50 turned on, right? I didn't like sparse 100. That would be uh, tragic. Tragic, tragic, tragic. Okay, no. It's just all those chests are empty. That's, uh, hmm. I mean, that's how it is sometimes when you roll sparse. Sometimes the 50% are all, like, up front. And sometimes... Ooh, a dancing dagger. Okay. Get out of my way, lady. So this is Rydia's mom. Uh, not Rydia. Uh, that's uh, Rosa's mom. Rosa's mom will actually tell you what key item locations you haven't or have not checked. I forgot to check the item shop. So we're going to do that. Bori and, oh, one of the neat things about uh, this version of the game is you can hit select and you can get, it'll actually tell you what... Uh, the item does like especially it's handy especially for the Japanese items if you don't know what they do uh, so we're going to do a we're going to open up my notes here uh, I like I really like to keep like not necessarily meticulous notes because obviously I'm not good at that but uh, I like to keep notes on like what's in the item shop and things like that. Because sometimes you end up in a, a dead-end spot where you cannot kill a boss. But which so you, maybe you have some money and you can go buy like a Boreas and it'll cast Ice 2 on all the enemies. And, you know, that's uh, might give you the DPS you need 
to take the boss out. So we've got, in Baron, we've got Cure 2, Cure 3, uh, and Hermes. And I'll also make a note of this Boreas. I don't think I'll need the Boreas, but... And Hourglass 3... Hourglass 3 is a really good if enemies if the enemies you're facing can be stopped. It's really good for some of the more difficult trap chests if you want to do them early. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check mist. We're going to run up. I like to follow like the generic path in the game that the they kind of send you on in terms of towns to see if to kind of look for equipment and things like that i don't a strength ring i don't always go into i don't think that's worth noting down i don't always go into the like the watery pass but crystal sword i will mark that down there's also some claws in there. Ice claws. But like the like if you're going for like just quick completion time, there's so there's no key items in um the watery pass. But what you can do is there's a lot of chests in there. So you might be able you might get lucky get like a stardust rod or something for like your wizards. So right now, I think... Let's see who's in the uh, Sand Ruby spot. I almost never recruit the person in the Sand Ruby spot unless I like the, like the first key item that the King uh, King's Guard gives you, the Bygun spot gives you, is the... Ninja swords. Ooh, a crystal ring. That's really good. We're going to put that on you because you're absurdly slow. And we're going to pass this down to you. And then we'll probably move that over to Palum when he gains some levels. Due to the fact... Oh. Uh, yeah. Due to the fact that he gets... Uh, he's faster. That's another twin. And I don't know which twin that is. I can never tell the twins apart. You think with as many times as I've played this game, I would, you know, be able to do that. But the answer is no. Crystal armor and dragoon armor. Uh, I'm just going to mark down the dragoon armor. I don't actually like using the crystal armor because you cannot... Um, you cannot berserk Cecil when he has it on. So generally, unless I have an Avenger, I don't use it. I went the long way there. And this lady right here is my nemesis. Sirens and whistles. I don't need a whistle. But them sirens seem kind of good. And... Star bells. I'm absolutely terrible at, like, precise inputs in this game. I already opened that. So you're going to see me, like, run into a wall a bunch. So do I want to go into the watery pass? I think I do. I'm going to go in there. I don't have any equipment. I, although I could probably blitz most of the bosses... With Fasoya, since he knows fire too. Sometimes you get Fasoya and he doesn't know any spells. <laughs> like, he'll have, like, Sight and, like, Toad or something. Like, you know, like he'll have no attack spells. Um, I rolled that, that Fasoya knows, has no has no white magic, so. But that's okay. Where He's got enough hit points to where he can probably beat several of the early boss battles to death with just his Lunar Stick.
Fasoya is not the best um, character to have in your party. He's really good. He's probably the best character up until the point you actually have to kill Zeromus. Uh, because he's very versatile. He, he knows all the spells. He's got, I mean, he knows Quake and Flare and all this other stuff. His MP pool is, is a problem. But the biggest issue with him is that he's slow. And uh, I've had situations where I was using him as a black mage in the Zeromus fight. And he couldn't keep up to kind of... There's a mechanic, and I'm not 100% sure if it's in the base Final Fantasy IV game, but at least in this version of the game, uh, for sure. If you hit Zeromus with a black magic spell right after he shakes and gets ready to cast Big Bang, so he'll he'll shake, and you hit him with, like, say, Flare or Virus or something. Um, I'm going to hold on to that apple for now instead of using it. Uh, but if you use it on... Uh, use like virus or flare or just any black magic spell you hit him with he'll counter with uh flare and then his next big bang for some reason does significantly less damage it'll do instead of like 2500 it'll do like 800 you know that kind of thing Go away, G-Force. I don't want your stupid game-ready driver. Thank you. Popping up while I'm recording. What's wrong with you? Uh, do I know Exit? I don't think I do. No. Uh, generally speaking, the best Black Mage is Palum. The best White Mage is Rosa. And then, like, uh, if you can... And then, of course, you have the their counterparts. So, Rydia is not bad she's not terrible to have as a black mage uh especially since you can find her summons as items meaning you can get bahamut really early which will uh seriously kind of it will seriously like put a damper on a lot of the bosses because even it lit for thousands and thousands of damage uh the problem with Rydia is of course getting her a couple of levels so she actually has like the 60 mp to cast it uh, all the NPCs do actually say stuff. Uh, some of, a lot, most of them say funny stuff. Some of them say, uh, tell you things that, you know, like interesting things that, like mechanical changes to the game. And okay, there's another apple. That's nice. If I keep the soya long term, which I probably will, I don't usually like sub out the uh character that is my 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 number one starter just out of like a a sense of like well you know you're my main character but unless it's tella <laughs> in which case tella's gone so we might be stuck we're probably going to be stuck with old mr mop for a while, but that's okay because he's a not a bad character. So we want to go over here and actually get another character. Since I do have fire two, we're going to go over here and check Mount Hobbs. You cannot go in the front entrance unless you have Rydia in your party. If you have Rydia in your party and you go in the front entrance, she will learn a random summon. That is Edge. Okay. GG, get carried all the way to the moon. Uh. Okay. I don't know how much hit points these these little things have. They're probably gonna yeah they're gonna explode. Okay, so they don't have but like probably a hundred. It looks like I have a hundred hit points. Not a big deal. Palum gained four levels. Learned a bunch of spells.
And all Fasoyas learn Piggy, Life 1, and Exit. That's good. We're going to just run real quick back here and check for these couple of chests. So, And to show you that, if you look down here, that ice is there. Uh, it's cleared away, again, like I said, if you bring Rydia. And she doesn't learn the Fire 1 spell, like, ever. But that's okay. Um, she, learned, she can learn Bahamut. Uh, she can learn any of her summons there, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I know for a fact she can also learn, like, Cockatrice. I've gotten Cockatrice there a couple of times. In fact, I think that's the only way to learn those spells. Uh, let's put you up front, Mr. Edgeworth. And we're just going to walk on back out, because you can't uh, exit. I don't think. I don't know. I never tried. Don't usually have exit at this point. Didn't think about it. Uh, okay, so now... We're going to go get that character, whoever's in the end. And depending on which twin it is, it's going to um, basically determine whether Fasoya is going to be a white mage or another black mage. Probably, I might get destroyed here. We'll see. Do I have anything to dart? Oh, no. Okay. Just killed him. Cool. That fight is uh, absolutely monstrous if you do it any any of the late game spots. Uh, we did a... Uh, I do... I'm sort of involved with a thing called Let's Racing Time. And... Um, I've been trying to kind of get involved with them. And... Uh, Let's see, Fire 2. And we did a Final Fantasy for Free Enterprise, like, kind of race. And, um... We were doing... Uh, to kind of keep this, the time down, we were doing, uh, like, an objective mode that you just win the game. And the objective mode we were doing was... Uh, Dark Matter uh, Babel Percent. And what Babel Percent is, uh, basically... You have to collect 30 Dark Matters, and then you have to complete the Giant of Babil. And when you get done with that, you win the game. Um, the highest hit point spot in the entire game is the uh, Fiend's Fight. It has like 65,000 HP or whatever. It's a lot of hit points. More than like, with the exception, I don't even know how much Romus has. But it has a lot. And we had the Dark Knight there. And it was just this constant fight of triage and... It lost me. I was in I was in first place when I got there, and it lost me the race because I went for a more balanced party, and I found uh, Palum, and the other one of the other people never found Palum, so he had two roses in his party, and he was able to keep up with the damage that was being output with because of the two white mages healing. So Fasoya, it looks like is going to be a black mage. So we're going to take this off of you. And we're going to put it on you. I don't really have anything else. This is not a bad party uh, so far. Uh, generally speaking, I think I would want... Um, Edge is actually not my first choice. He's really great in the... Earth. Gosh, all these chests are just empty. All of them. Every single one of them. Oh my gosh. Uh, Edge is actually not my first choice for a frontliner uh, by far because while he is absurdly powerful in the early game, he is uh, incredibly weak comparatively. He's he's like the weakest of the, the, the main five characters that like go into the end game in the... I did put Sparse 50 on, right? I'm pretty sure I did. Feels like there's more empty... There wasn't a single chest in here open. I mean, uh, that has anything in it, was there? Uh, uh oh, we're gonna fight the Karate Man. 
All right, so we're just going to hit you with fire two, and we're just going to hit you. Right, we're gonna hit you with fire two again. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. So like Fasoya and Edge are going to make the early game here pretty easy. Um, but having the two of them actually does. They do. They're not the ooh, the darkness crystal. That means I can go to the moon. I'm not going to the moon. I've still got places on the overworld to check. Oh, wait. You know what? I know exit. Why am I walking? The answer is because I'm dumb. Alright, cool. So... Um, that was Karate Man. I want to go back and check. So there is, um, you get, there's a boss here, and then there's a boss over here at the Misty Cave, and we're, I'm going to go actually just fight them real quick to get, um, pour them some experience. And also, on the off chance that one of them is the Mist Dragon. The Mist Dragon is, so we got some Lunar Ds. This is a pretty good spot to see the Lunar Dragons. The Lunar Dragons can be one of those problem fights if you <laughs> for certain parties. So. Empty. Empty. So just one chest in here. I feel like so far it's been like 70% or 80% of the chests have been empty. But what that means is that we'll just find more chests in some of the other areas. It's not a big deal. Alright, so let's go kill the this boss. Again, just, just on the off chance it is the Mist Dragon. It is the Antlion. Normally what I would do in this situation is just save these bosses for when I got stuck. Um, but again, we're going to use Flame and Fire 2. Flame again. Just so I don't get counterattacked. Uh, this guy does counters. He probably can't. The only person he could really hurt is Porum with his counter. I and mean, I just, you know. She's defending anyway, but, you know, whatever. Alright, so she is not. Gaia drum? That's not bad. But also, killing those bosses powers up my Fusoya. Well, oh, the dancing dagger is actually better. Look at that. I don't... Uh, I'll keep the boomerang for now, because like if we run into like plague or something, the boomerang is going to be my best chance for killing it in a timely fashion I think since the boomerang is throw elemental alright let's see and now we want to go over here and check always check your chocobo forests there's a treasure in each one of those Do you how many you know how many times I found just an a, a random adamant in the um I think the Gaia is Wisdom? No, it's not. But still, put it on. Ah, you know how many times I've, like, for real though, you know how many times I've, uh, like, looked at the treasure in the here and it's just been an adamant? A bunch. Like, 
the, the, the Chocobo Forest right outside of Baron. It's like, oh, I just get to start with an adamant because I checked the Chocobo Forest. Go me. Let's check this. White spear. Mute arrows. That's good. Actually, having a if I could find a decent bow, that would be nice. Because I think I have some mute arrows. Where are they? I have charm arrows. Oh, no. Charm arrows work, too. Hourglass and mute bells. Nope. Don't care. Uh... We're going to defend Fabul. So this is where the... Uh, in the normal game, this is where the Fabul Gauntlet is. Normally in... We don't have to watch all the cutscenes and nonsense. And we don't have to go all the way back to the throne room. We just got to fight Golbez right now. This is a mostly scripted fight at the beginning. Basically, what's going to happen is he's going to summon Shadow. He's going to paralyze us, summon, summon the Shadow Dragon. And then um, he's going to kill several of our party members. And we're going to have to bring them back to life. And then the real fight begins. This fight can be troublesome uh, because his spells are very powerful. So hopefully... Eh, that's not what I wanted to see. That's okay. I was hoping that that would, uh... I was hoping that that would, like, not go off until after... As soon as the the, the, the dragon retreats, you can start, kill, start attacking Golbez. So... We want to do that. Uh, I'm going to actually dart this at you. Mofo. And... Actually... I like it if you got the experience. Oh, well, uh, whatever. He doesn't have a lot of hit points in this spot, so it's good. Yeah, it's fine. Not worth a, too much experience. Mostly I'm killing the bosses... Uh, so Fasoya can get powered up and then this boss also gives me a key item when I kill it obviously protect ring that's pretty good uh, let's put that let's put I have a no, I thought I had a samurai hmm. whatever let's put this on you so your defense is not as terrible you've got a diamond on you're good Tiara. Uh, is the Tiara minus... No, it's not. Cool. But it's Wisdom, so it's not good for you. And... I mean, it's better than what you got on, but Wisdom... So if there's two spellcasting stats. It's Wisdom and Will. Wisdom is for um, Black Magic. Will is for White. That's a really good find. And we already have the pan, so let's go turn that in for another key item. Oh, wait. No, you have to whack Yang with it. Derp. Oh, wait. I didn't. I missed the chest. How did I do that? Charm claws. Okay. What did I pick up? Ninja hat. That's right. Um, I'm actually going to put the ninja hat on you. Ninja hat's a really good uh, one because it, almost anybody can use it. In fact, I think everybody can use it. And it's plus three agility. Make the black mage go faster. Vroom, vroom. Edge is alright with his equipment right now. We, like, we don't need to upgrade... Ooh, a cat claw. I have a charm claw and a cat claw. So if I find uh, Yang, that'd be pretty good. 
I'd be alright. Yang, again, like, not my first choice for a frontline fighter. <clears throat> so, like, to rank all the characters, uh, Cecil's hands down the best. Like, like, no joke. No, like, no contest. Cecil's the best character you can have in the party. If you get five Cecils, or four Cecils and, like, a Rosa, you're... You're gold. Gucci, as they say. As the kids say, I've been told. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Item shop is and stuff. All that's over here, but we want to check these items. <laughs> Empty. Man. Man, there's just nothing. No free stuff today. Being stingy. There's some apples. <clears throat> Apples are a good investment if you end up with, like, Edward. Ooh, Mass Immunes. Uh, I want those. Uh, let's see. 17, 21. I don't need this. I'll keep on to that. That. I'll keep that. I'll keep that. Unfortunately, we're at that spot in the game where, like, it's hard to tell what you need to keep. I don't need this. Uh, what you need to keep and what you can sell. Like, you don't, because you don't know who, like, your characters are. Actually, you know what? I do. I can go get my fifth character. Ooh, crystal rings. Crystal rings are really good. They have plus five speed on them. I almost forgot that I have the darkness crystal. So let's... Oh wait, no, Mysidia is this way, yeah. Let's go do that. Let's go check that. Uh, you can get a character check on the uh, Fasoya's throne. So we're going to go do that real quick. Hopefully it's someone good. Hopefully it's a physical fighter and not a caster. I would accept... So, like, the, the physical characters are, like, ranked in order. Cecil is, like, number one by a huge margin. Kane is second. Uh, third place is... Edge, and then Yang, and finally Sid is last. Uh, well, uh, then Edward, then Sid. And, um, like, for the physical characters. And then you have the magical characters. Everybody else, everybody's more or less equivalent, with the exception of Tella. Uh, that said, Tella's not bad in the early game. You go do ordeals, he learns all his spells, and then if you have Tella, you can then... You can easily clear out uh, the Eblon Cos Castle. Eblon. It's called Eblana in one of the versions, and I forget which. Is it this one? I think. But no, the Eblon ca Castle. I, I like saying Eblon makes me want to say Castle for some reason. But the Eblon Castle, because a lot of the monsters in there, every single one of their encounter, the monster in the boxes can be petrified. So. Who is it? Don't be a caster. Oh. Okay. That's a Cecil. That's hecka good. And that means I need to go do ordeals now to get a paladin, Cecil. So when you do ordeals, uh, you do. There's three bosses at the top of ordeals, and you do the three bosses. You get uh, all paladin. You get a key item. All paladin. All Cecils become paladins. All 
uh, tell us, remember their spells, and learn medium. So. And like I said, there is a, like a niche spot for Tella. Tella's decently good in the... Uh, up until, like, I would say, like, about the land of summons itself cave-ish spot the story would take you. So. We're gonna save our game and kill these bosses. Get ourselves a paladin. And I have an Excalibur. It's not a crystal sword, but... Hey, a crystal shield. Uh, oh, I already have some of those. So, I'm pretty happy with this party. It's pretty good. It's, it's very good, actually. <laughs> um, basically, I have a white mage, a black mage, a swing a swing mage. He can go either way. And uh, I have a Cecil. Edge is there, too. Calcabrina. Too bad I don't know... Um... Quake. Okay, this fight should be over. Edge's flame spill is really good in the early game for mopping up these, uh, these little. What did I learn? I didn't even pay attention. Uh, let's see. You cure four. Okay, so we don't need this over here. Uh, cure four. I do want to put cure three over here. Exit life slow. Cure two is fine right there. Uh, float and fast. And ice to weak venom stop. That's pointless. Lit to okay. Hopefully, I remember to switch my party members back. Oh, look, it's plague. Ugh. I'm going to get a game over here. Unless I can dart something. I'm not darting the Excalibur. Oh my gosh. This is not going to one-shot the boss. So we're going to get a game over. That's fine. That happens sometimes. Sometimes you just find a random plague. And it's no good. Uh, I do want to put the boomerang on. I forget. Oh, wait. You could put the cat claws on. Uh, well, whatever. We'll just do it with the dancing dagger. I don't have anything else, do I? No. Uh... Actually, you know what? Take this ninja hat off. We're going to put it on you, because I need you to go fast, my friend. Can you can you wear that bandana? You can. Alright, so we're going to ninja flame. And fire two again, and that should finish. That'll mop this fight up. Oh, one flame mopped it up. Good. Um, let's see. Change. 
I guess it did matter, like, what row everybody's in. Oh, crap. I forgot to turn my battle speed down. I'm probably going to die again. Yeah, I'm going to die again. Alright, cool. No, we're just going to... There's a weird interaction, yeah, there's a weird interaction with, uh, like, this death thing where, like, if you're in the middle of attacking, it doesn't kill you. It has to be... So, I got into kind of a loop there that allowed me to kind of survive. That was good. And I learned Virus. Cool. Armor, Warp, and Mute. Pointless. But he's got his level 2 spells. That's, that's good enough for all of the overworld. Uh, let's see. We want to do life. And life. And we'll use a tint. Uh, no, tint. Use a tant. Use a tant. Save the game. And let's go. Cecil becomes the paladin. And we get a key item here. What is it? Okay, just a power thing. And what's our boss? Barbaricia. Okay. Let's just hit her with a uh, fire. And we're going to take this stupid... Silver staff they start him with. Just hit her with an Excalibur. Oh, I need to... Ah, crap. I was hoping to get that in before. Looks like we are... Looks like we're just, uh... Okay, no, that, that's easy. Easy spot. Virus, Shell, and Fatal. All Cecils become Paladins, and all Tellas recall their spells and learn Medio, wherever they are. I like that little touch, wherever they are. So, like, if we didn't have Cecil, it'd be like, all Cecils become Paladins, wherever they are. Uh, let's put some armor on Cecil. Uh, first, let's do this, and then put some armor on Cecil. Diamond. And samurai. And... Nothing. I've got no gloves. Actually, you know what? You've got some gloves. There we go. Good. Excellent. Wonderful. Oh, wait. No, I'm going to put Fasoya. Sorry. The mop is the main character of this adventure. Alright, so what do I have left to check on the overworld? I have... I have a trap chest in the Tower of Zot, plus a boss. I have 
uh, Ebalon Castle. And I need to stop saying it like that. I'm sorry. I have Ebalon Castle and I have... That's it, right? Hmm. Adamant. Okay. We'll just kind of keep a note of that. A full moon, an archer, another dancing dagger. I don't really want to buy any of this just yet. So we're just going to continue on. I haven't reached the point in the game where I'm like, yeah, I need to buy purchase equipment because I haven't found anything. Don't care about that. Don't care about none of that. Just gonna run through the waterway here and go check these chests in the back. Or spots. Treasure spots in the back. Nothing. Wow. Okay, game. Um. Hmm. Alright. That's fine. We're going to go in the castle now. And I'm going to check the treasure spot in Zot. And I'm going to check the boss in Zot. Like, so, to complete Zot, you have to have the Earth Crystal. And to... Um, when you... But you can uh, go in there, fight the monster in the box, and you can uh, fight the Mega Sisters spot. Okay, game, stop. I say game. I'm blaming the game, but it's me. I'm terrible. If you were not playing No Free Lunch, you could get a key item from Edward here. But I am playing. Or if you were playing Free Lunch, you could get a key item. But I'm playing No Free Lunch. Meaning I have to find and kill the Mist Dragon to get that same key item. So. so I do want to actually check as many chests as I can. Uh, excuse me, boss spots as I can to look for uh, the Mist Dragon. Finding the... Um, uh, finding those summon items is pretty good because I can sell them for money. They actually remove the summon items that teach you a goblin, mage, and cockatrice to put those in. Because there's a, like a limited number of space, like a limited amount of space for items in the memory of the game. Poison Axe. That'd be useful if I had Sid. Although, to be fair, axes are not Sid's best weapons. Uh, he's much better off with a bow and arrow. But sometimes you just don't get a good. Bo you just don't get a good bow and arrow. Like, whatever. It happens. Monsters. There we go. So now we're just going to beat this monster up. It's ice two. That should kill him. Not worth a whole lot of experience, but Cecil should gain, yeah, like 10 levels. <laughs> so this game has a catch up. Uh, Free Enterprise has a catch up mechanism. Uh, the pink tail. I don't have the. So the pink tail just gets you an, uh, an adamant, it is a key item. Uh, so that's good to get, but it just gets you an adamant. These mofos are going to send me to the moon, aren't they? 